All right, hey there, Dynamic Cyclist. Corey Chris coming to you from the office where I have been working away on the training plans to support the September challenge, which is going to be the distance challenge. Now, it's actually more focused on achieving training consistency and training balance. So training really smart and getting as many miles as you can in through the months of September, but also listening to your body switching it up a little bit, making sure that you're doing all the little things so you'll see some strength work in there, obviously some flexibility, mobility work in there, and hopefully finishing off the months of September in you know some of the best shape that you've been in. That's the goal anyway. So these training plans are here to help support that. That being said, I'm going to show you how you can modify them to meet your needs, your schedule, and they really are quite flexible in their utility. So couple of things I want to cover in this quick little video here, although it'll probably go a little long because I'll ramble. One is how to choose the right training plan. Two, what kind of workouts can you expect to see? And three, what can you expect as you progress through the four weeks of training in these plans? So first of all, the most important part is choosing the right training plan. And it's really based on volume. So the plans are all very similar. However, the beginner plan has the lowest uh, amount of volume obviously intermediate in the middle and advanced you're going to be doing the most amount of volume so it's really not based on skill level or riding ability it's all based on training time and i use time because it's a better variable than distance because distance has so many other things that can impact it like whether you ride inside or outside the train you're riding on wind etc so if you gauge how many hours hopefully hours and not minutes, but <laughs> how many hours you've been training each week, you should be able to match up with the most appropriate training plan. So for example, the intermediate plan, if you look over onto the side here, this one starts off with seven hours of cycling. Now, that being said, there are optional workouts within each training plan in each week. So uh, the intermediate plan has an hour and 45 minutes of optional riding. So it could come down to around a see how my math is, 545, 515, sorry. Um, on the other end of the scale, it can go the other direction where if you wanna add in some additional rides, you just wanna hop on the trainer, log some time, or go for an easy ride outside, or whatever ride outside, you're also more than welcome to do that as well. So, a little bit of flexibility, but if you can kind of you know figure out what kind of riding hours you've been doing in the last you know, number of weeks, match it up with the right training plan, you should be good to go. If you get into a training plan and it's either too easy or too hard, you're more than welcome to scrap that one, go back, download another one, either you know beginner or advanced or intermediate, whatever direction you're going in, and uh, just pick it right back up again. The other thing I will say is you have complete flexibility to move workouts around to match your schedule uh, this is again only a guide hopefully gives you some good ideas of different workouts that you can do gives you a little bit of accountability but again it all comes down to your personal schedule what works for you and uh, hopefully you're just able to get in as much as possible so obviously the workouts each week we have rides in there within the ride workouts most of it's going to be in the lower intensity zones we're really trying to maximize duration spent riding so we want to minimize the stress of intensity so you're going to see lots of zone two stuff in there we do have a few technical workouts uh one working on leg cadence uh, so we will be playing with that a little bit uh, and we do have some you know, pedal stroke technique and muscular endurance work uh, as we progress through as well. Little bit of tempo work. So uh, you will see some workouts in there where you can push the pace up a little bit. And, uh, you know, again, you don't have to be super prescribed. If you're feeling great one day and you want to push the pace, great. If you're riding with a friend who is just relentless and won't let up and you don't want to get dropped off the back or a group, uh, you can go out and ride those harder rides. But just keep in mind that that will impact your future workouts. And uh, you always want to be aware of that. And then, of course, we have our endurance workouts, which uh, we're really trying to log the miles. They tend to be on the weekends, but you're more than welcome to move those to any other day that works for you. The recovery day right now is on Sunday, flexible. 
if you want to do some cross training get some running in some swimming in some paddling whatever other activity that uh, you love doing some family time highly recommend that use those days to reset not only the body but the brain and um you know a little bit of flexibility mobility work is always a good idea as well so that being said the two types of other workouts you're going to see one is a strength workout it will follow the dynamic routine if you've been doing strength uh, routines out of the dynamic programming already you're more than welcome just to continue on where you currently are but if you've done nothing you can start back at uh, month number one and uh, this really will support your riding going forward so again when we're looking at training balance highly recommend doing this work the other workouts you're going to see are the flexibility and mobility workouts doing those little things again will pay dividends that being said every day of the week if it's too much for you and you can't fit into your schedule anything is better than nothing so you know you finish a ride and you just got five ten minutes to do some stretching again do that <laughs> at minimum and uh, if you can fit in the longer routines then uh, as I said it will pay dividends going forward in the future so basically you can expect progression from week to week you're going to see the bike volume build the dynamic programming stays fairly consistent so in terms of total training duration it's really the bike volume that's building and as you can see just for an example in the intermediate plan we start at seven hours and we're looking at 517 training stress score moving up to seven and a half hours or 736 to be precise with a 571 training stress score then up to an 816 with a 598 and finishing off with just under nine hours of cycling and 650 in terms of training stress again as you move through this listen to your body if you need to take it down a little bit because you're feeling a little too fatigued or any niggles are coming on please do that or on the flip side if you're feeling absolutely fantastic feel free to log a couple extra low, you know bonus rides or you can even extend some of the rides out if you choose to do that as well so the whole idea it's a personal challenge achieve training consistency with a nice balance of workouts and hopefully by the end of September you are ready to take on some really solid fall training blocks in the best shape possible got a really strong base and uh, you're gonna have a great season of cycling to come so that is it for the training plans hopefully that all makes sense and uh, happy training happy challenging yourself and uh, we will see you at the end of the month in the best shape you've ever been in. Take care.